If you think of your body as like the hard drive of a computer and all your hormones are the software programs, the hypothalamus is your operating systems. It's the hypothalamus that produces dopamine that turns prolactin off in the morning when the sun comes up. In patients who have struggle with their hormones, you need that caffeine to wake up because you're under the influence of prolactin. So you, you drink a bunch of coffee instead and get your little artificial boost. I preach five pillars to hypothalamic health and optimal functioning. And most of it you're doing with your with your patients, and most of it people know about, but we're just not consistent enough. Okay, so let's summarize the five. Okay, so it's... All right, everyone. A very special guest is on the show today. We are going to talk deeply about hormones. A lot of you ask questions about hormones, what's going on with my adrenals and with my thyroid, but we don't really ask the real question. How do we go upstream and find out the core, the fountainhead of where the hormones are coming from? We need to talk about this. Guess what? I got Deborah Margopoulos. She's an intuitive, integrative family nurse practitioner. She has spent over 30 years blending the science of medicine with the art of healing and helping thousands from a variety of symptoms to thrive in treating their, guess what? Hypothalamus. This is a part of the body where we produce the hormones and we're not healing or talking about that. She specializes in neuroimmune endocrinology. We're gonna go into that. And Deborah focuses on optimizing the function of the hypothalamus. It's the maestro of Symphony of Hormones. She's the author of several books, including her latest hypothalamus handbook, which I got right here with me, which outlines the steps people can take to start healing their own hypothalamus. Man, I can't wait to talk to the hormone queen. It doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter your hormones. We're gonna to get to the root of it right now. Welcome to the show, Deborah. Thank you so much for having me. Was that enough energy behind yeah, the good. intro? Okay, awesome. I love that. <laughs> Fantastic. I have the hypothalamus handbook in front of me. We're going to go into that in a little bit. But I want to ask you off the bat. Okay. So many people suffer with so many hormonal issues, hormonal imbalances, hormonal diseases. What are we missing in conventional medicine when it comes to hormones that can really, really be powerful for us healing? In conventional medicine and also in naturalistic medicine as well, we miss the maestro of that symphony of hormones. We miss the operating systems. We miss the hypothalamus. Mm. If you think of your body as like the hard drive of a computer and all your hormones are the software programs, the hypothalamus is your operating systems. Mm. So you can't, you can't just fix the hardware. You can't just adjust the software if you don't have an operating system that's functioning normally and well. So we got the we got the maestro, we're not paying attention to the maestro. We're looking downstream at the maybe the instruments being like, what's wrong with this instrument without understanding, hey, there's a coordinator here of everything. And if that coordinator's off, it doesn't matter the tuning of the instruments, everything's a mess. Exactly. Okay, exactly. so w w for those who don't know what the hypothalamus is, where it is, what it does, for us to understand hormones, we gotta understand hypothalamus. What is it, where is it, what does it do? So the hypothalamus is a small organ in your brain. It's about the size of an almond in a shell. And if you actually put your fingers right at, between your eyebrows mm -hmm. and go straight into your brain, it's right there. It is part of the brain that is not protected by the blood brain barrier. So it's getting exposed to everything you eat, all the toxins you expose yourself to, viruses, bacteria, everything, electrolytes, four out of five senses feed through the hypothalamus. And it controls not just your hormones, but your immune function, and your autonomic nervous system. It's the gateway to your limbic system, to your hippocampus, which is basically how you learn, your memory, et cetera. And it also communicates directly with your gut, with your microbiota, as well as the digestive tract and controls your metabolism. Mm. It, there isn't much the hypothalamus doesn't control. The maestro. It's the maestro, it the whole is. symphony of hormones. So you mentioned a few things that, that, that perked up my ears. Uh, it, it, the gateway to the limbic system. Mm -hmm. So, so d it, d does it regulate or does it have a control over the way we express ourselves emotionally? Yes. So the hypothalamus is like the physical coordinator, kind of the chore choreographer of the dance of the body, of the way the body responds to emotion. And it also is the main producer of dopamine, which is your reward system. Mm -hmm. So how you express emotion, your facial expressions, your body expressions, mm -hmm. your heart racing or not, your stomach rumbling or not, that's all the hypothalamus. Mm -hmm. And we're not even thinking about upstream, this 
conductor, this coordinator of all of this. All of it. Because you, you, we, we, you mentioned the physical stuff, but the emotional stuff really perked up my ears, of course. But like now we're talking about the gut too, connected to the gut. Yes. So, so d- connected to neurotransmitters like dopamine, how we reward ourselves, our motivation. But, but what is the implication then of the hypothalamus in the gut? What, what's happening? Is this the gut brain axis that you're referring this to? This is the gut brain axis. When they say gut brain axis, it's not the brain, it's the hypothalamus. I mean, it is in the brain, but uh-huh. it's particularly the hypothalamus. To be more detail To be more detailed. Okay. So all of the many hormones that the gut produces are received by and partially controlled by the hypothalamus, mm. okay? So for instance, when you take a bite of something and it has fat on it, the, the feeling of fat, the message of fat is sent by a nerve to the hypothalamus that says, you're gonna eat some fat and cholecystokinine is then produced, which mm. helps the gallbladder release bile. That's the hypothalamus controlling that, okay? There's, and there's a vagal nerve response of the gut back to the hypothalamus to tell it what's going on. Plus all the food mechanisms, all the amino acids, fatty acids, glucose, all of the nutrients that are coming to the hypothalamus tells the hypothalamus how to regulate digestion, absorption, and then the microbiota, the actual microbiome actually talk to the hypothalamus as well through neurotransmitters, through metabolism, Mm. through short chain fatty acid production. So it's this constant communication. Plus the hypothalamus is talking to your fat cells too to find out how much it's storing and super sensitive to leptin and adiponectin. And so it's this beautiful arrangement of communi- it's communication. Mm. And it's either, we're either communicating well or miscommunicating. So, so I'm, in my cartoon head, I'm thinking about like just this like little version of me behind a control. Board. Like the Wizard of Oz. Yeah, like the Wizard of, of Oz yeah. pressing all these buttons. It's that where my, is that, that's happening in my hypothalamus? Yeah, it's pressing tons of buttons and okay. receiving lots of information and getting all the information in from the body, from the senses, from the blood, from the nervous system, and then orchestrating everything. So if you're not, let's say, you're not eating enough protein to make enough amino acids to produce serotonin, your hypothalamus has to make a decision. How much of those amino acids are going to be shunted over to the brain versus the heart? The heart needs it more. It's more, it's much more important for survival. So you're going to be depressed before we're going to let the heart stop wow. beating. Okay. Does that make sense? Make it more the hypothalamus sense. is making those decisions all the time. It controls your heart rate, your rate of breathing, your blood pressure, all of it. Uh, uh, unbelievable. So, so it really is the conductor going, yes, uh, we need these nutrients, but my God, you need to eat, be eating better because we only got a few rations here. Exactly. Now I need to make a decision. Exactly. Or you're aging and your hormones are declining. You're in andropause for a male, menopause for a female. I'm no longer getting those hormones that tell me that everything's nice and juicy and I can keep things invigorated. So now I got to slow your metabolism down. And these are these patients who come to me to say, why am I gaining weight? I'm eating the same. I'm exercising like your metabolism slowed down because you're not supporting your hypothalamus through this process. Now, I'm excited to tell you about Nuzes Good Green Vitality. It has revolutionized my approach to daily nutrition and whole body wellness, right? This supplement provides a true symphony of vitamins, of minerals, of superfoods, and one convenient scoop. And that's designed to bridge the gap between what we eat and what our bodies really need for comprehensive nourishment. Now imagine simplifying your supplement routine and replacing all them bottles that you have there with just one drink. That's the convenience of Good Green Vitality and without compromising on overall quality and nutritional integrity. Since integrating this into my regimen, I feel different. My energy levels are enhanced and I can tell my immune function continues to stay stronger and stronger and stronger. Even if I'm traveling, running around, going on business trips, getting on the flight, always, always strong and robust. And the natural taste blends seamlessly into my morning smoothie, or if I have it just with water, it tastes good. Good Green Vitality is more than just a supplement. It's a commitment to help complement your mind, body, health. I recommend embracing this path to vitality and giving News S a try today. You can get 20% off all News S products by using the code DRG at checkout. Head to newss.usa.com slash DRG to learn more about starting your whole body wellness journey with Good Green Vitality. Mm. And, and ladies and gentlemen, hold on, we're going we're gonna to get into feeding the <laughs> hypothalamus, what, what disrupts it, but we're just getting the idea on, on how important, what's the implication of this beautiful part of the brain that, that is the conductor for, for the 10th time I can say it because it's the only way that I can visualize it is unbelievably powerful and receptive to, to the rest of the body, mm-hmm. sensitive. It seems like the most sensitive part of the brain, really. It's always tuned into everything in the body that's happening. It is. Um, 
Okay, so the hypothalamus, you mentioned the blood-brain barrier. So yes. it's going to make it vulnerable. Mm-hmm. What is the hypothalamus or the conductor of our hormones? What is it vulnerable to? It's vulnerable to malnutrition, overnutrition. If you overeat, it's very vulnerable. If you're not eating enough, you're not getting enough nutrients. Incredibly vulnerable to toxins, heavy metals, pesticides, endocrine disruptors, all affect the hypothalamus. Mm. Okay. Mm. It's vulnerable to infection. One of the reasons we have a lot of research about the hypothalamus right now in 2024 is because of COVID. COVID-19, the symptoms of long COVID is hypothalamic dysfunction. Mm. And they're realizing that because the hypothalamus has tons of the ARC receptors. Mm. So, so it's basically, it was able to be susceptible to the infection. Oh, and it settles there and then it causes, you know, the infertility and the menstrual cycles and the adrenal issues and the thyroid issues and the depression and the fatigue and the mm. mitochondrial dysfunction. And, and for us to understand, and I want to go back to the nutrition part, but for us to understand, hypothalamus is coordinating our stress hormone, our thyroid hormone, uh, the, the, the way we hold onto water, the way we don't hold on to water in our body, our, basically our energy, uh, the way that our gut is working. You talked about neurotransmitters. It is really working on hormones, neurotransmitters, every part of our body it's sensitive to. So you mentioned about nutrition, mm -hmm. over nutrition, under eating, over mm -hmm. eating. Uh, how does under eating, because there's, there's, there's some, and, and maybe I, I'll stray towards that sometimes. Maybe I'm like, oh, I should have eaten more today. Mm -hmm. How does under eating affect the hypothalamus? So if you're not getting enough calories for the hypothalamus, if you're starving your hypothalamus, you're starving your body, you're not getting the calories you need or the types of nutrients you need, your hypothalamus has to make decisions on, again, where is it going to send the nutrients, the amino acids, the fatty acids, mm -hmm. which part of the body needs its attention and which parts of the body is going to have to lay low. So one of the biggest effects in, in malnutrition or undernutrition is fertility loss. You're not going to make the same sex hormones. Your thyroid's going to function at a much lower level because you don't need to be metabolizing things as quickly because we're trying to maintain muscle mass, bone mass, fat mass, organ mass. So the metabolism starts to slow down. Mm. That cachexia, which is basically that, that loss of nutrition. And when you start to like decline, you see this in old people and you see this in people with cancer where they, they lose their mm -hmm. muscle tissue and their bone mass. Everything just starts fading is because the hypothalamus is literally now having to feed off you in order to feed vital organs like the heart. Mm. So under nutrition, all the way to severe nutrition, hypothalamus is involved. From Absolutely. The Absolutely. Okay. So maybe something that's more applicable to Americans is Overeating, yes. Overnutrition, mm -hmm. maybe not even overnutrition, just overfeeding yourself mm -hmm. with food, calories. How does that affect the hypothalamus? So we know through research that high fat diets and high sugar diets, diets that are in simple sugars that are very high caloric content, um, the hypothalamus is actually affected. In fact, it, it changes the genetics, the epigenetics of the hypothalamus. The neurons actually change. The hypothalamus is made of multiple neuron bodies, which are neurological and also endocrine. They produce hormones and they also have neurological effects. So the hypothalamus actually changes because of this diet to the point where it actually changes the communication between the brain and the gut, the hypothalamus and the gut, the hypothalamus and the fat cells, as well as reproductive organs, so your you know testes in a male, ovaries in a female, and your adrenals and your thyroid, and your pituitary gland as well, mm. growth hormone, prolactin production, and pineal production for the melatonin. Mm. So so we're, we're it's overfed with over calories, and then it needs to start making decisions on how that's affecting everything. It, it's well, the over calories, the too much fat and too much sugar, yeah. actually cause hypothalamic inflammation. Oh, it's causing the inflammation. Yes. Yes. Okay. So in, so this may get a little scientific, so slow me down a little Let's bit. Let's do it. Okay. So inside of your cells, you have something called endothelial reticulum. Mm -hmm. And those are basically, if you remember cell biology, those are the things that are all kind of folded up mm -hmm. in the cells. And those pieces actually are part of the energy mechanism, but they're also part of the detoxification of the cells. Those become stressed when you're, when you get either malnutrition, undernutrition, or overnutrition. And that stress in the endothelial reticulum is incredibly damaging to the hypothalamus. It is very affected by it. So it affects its function and its ability to orchestrate all the rest of your hormones, your immune system, your neurological system. And so it's not just in the rest of the body, but you literally your master controller is affected mm. by this inflammation. 
So they now see that hypothalamic microinflammation in the cells of the hypothalamus is underlying aging, obesity, you know, depression, mm. PTSD, mm. so many factors that we see as kind of, you know, we can medicate these things away. We're treating downstream. Oh, wow. And, and we don't even talk about it. Let, let me tell you something. I know what the hypothalamus is from school, but it's mm -hmm. not like we had a whole class or a chapter nope. on it. Mm -hmm. You know, it was part of the, neuro, the neurological studies, you know, yeah. but um, this is something that absolutely needs to be talked about more. It, and it really sticks out. You say the uh, endo, endoplasmic reticulum. I think about like the little accordion. It was like an accordion. Yes, yes, when I would does. see those cartoons, yeah. I'm like, oh, look at the accordion in the cell. But to understand, because it, it, in my mind, I need to actually say things again to, for it to stay there forever. Sure. So you're saying when we don't eat enough or we eat too much, this part of the cell is becoming overly stressed. Yes. So not, it's not able to function correctly, detoxify, and specifically the hypothalamus is very sensitive to endoplasmic reticulum stress. Yes. Okay. And, and because of that, all of our hormones are effective. Affected. Absolutely. Uh, unbelievable. Okay. Now, now I'm seeing the big picture. It's causing inflammation. We don't think about, oh, you know, I just ate too much today. You know, I'm a little bloated. I'm a little tired. I'm going to go to sleep. We don't think about, I might be inflamed. Mm -hmm. My brain might be inflamed because I ate too much. It, it, it's, it's incredible when, when you start making that connection. Now, on the subject of food, you mentioned pesticides. Yes. You mentioned all of these toxins mm -hmm. that we're exposed to. What happens? Let's say if I have broccoli that's been doused in pesticides and they say, oh, you know, it's, it's, it won't affect your body because it's only low dose you're, you're fine. It, it's able to be put out to the store shelves. Are they missing the point when it comes to our brain and our hypothalamus and how that's affected to the pesticide? Well, lucky for most of us, we have fat cells, white, white fat cells rather than brown fat cells, meaning they have less mitochondria. That's the difference between brown and white, mostly in our belly that will store those pesticides for us for a while. Mm. Okay. So we can store all that extra, extra poison. But it does get into the rest of the cells. And when you start to lose weight, guess what you're dumping? Oh, well, Poison toxins. into the system. Mm -hmm. And guess who's getting it? Your hypothalamus, which is going to slow down your weight loss process because you're literally poisoning your body by losing that, that weight and all those pesticides, all those chemicals coming back out into the system. How come no one talks about that? How come no one talks about the storage of fat soluble toxins in our fat and when we lose weight that being liberated mm -hmm. into the body and affecting our brain that's that i i haven't seen that at all and and it's something that needs to be talked about and then that, that brings this question then would it then be possible if you're so toxic so much stuff stored in your fat that your body's going to be resistant to weight loss because it doesn't want to dump all those toxins. Absolutely. Absolutely. Your hypothalamus is fighting you. It's fighting you because it knows you're going to poison yourself. Every time you dump, it knows that's where it's coming from. Mm. It, it is directly communicating with your fat cells through the nervous system. It knows where this is stored. Mm. It's supposed to be stored there. It's protecting you. Mm -hmm. So it needs to be a process of, it needs to be a lot slower. We need to think about detoxification pathways. We need to make sure our patients' livers and kidneys are functioning normally, that they have the support they need for cellular detoxification. And if you're not doing all of that, then weight loss is going to cause more issues. This is, this is an incredible thought because we don't, we don't think about, oh, on a weight loss program, Maybe we should first talk about your your ability to detox. Absolutely. How healthy is your liver? How healthy is your kidneys? Are you peeing? Are you pooping? Are you sweating? How mm -hmm. much water are you drinking? What foods are you doing to support your body? That's part of a weight loss program. It is. At least an effective one. And it's and it's and it all comes back to the hypothalamus. It all comes back to the hypothalamus. It's gonna fight you because it doesn't want you to poison all the rest of the vital organs. Mm. And so that's the struggle these patients get in. And lots of them will become incredibly ill with rapid weight loss as well hmm. because of that toxic effect, especially if their kidneys and liver can't keep up with the toxins. Hmm. And it's going to be mostly liver because these are fat soluble toxins. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in your research, have you seen anything that it went from the hypothalamus that comes to it being sensitive to uh, cortisol, excess stress, repetitive thinking, 
uh, just your internal relationship with yourself. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So just to be clear, I'm a clinician. I'm a family nurse practitioner. Mm -hmm. So most of my research is done like you with case studies, yes. right? And then I do lots of back-end research to make sure that everything that I'm sure. doing. And so everything in my book's bibbed and all that kind of stuff. So does cortisol affect the hypothalamus? Absolutely. So an excess fight or flight response, a stress response, it's actually orchestrated by the hypothalamus. Remember the HPA axis, mm -hmm. the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. We know in people with high stress, PTSD, clinical, long-term clinical depression, their hypothalamus is actually a different size. It's 5% larger because it's overstimulated in, that, in the hypothalamic area that controls the cortical releasing factor, mm -hmm. the part of the hypothalamus that controls that whole HPA axis. So it's, it is affected by high levels of cortisol and oftentimes just su trying to suppress the cortisol at the, at the adrenal level isn't enough if you're not correcting the miscommunication at the hypothalamic level. Well, this is what often happens in mm -hmm. uh, natural medicine. Mm -hmm. We go, oh, well, um, let's fix your adrenals mm -hmm. and then let's give you all these wonderful adaptogenic herbs, mm -hmm. which, which actually help or... Uh, we can just target the adrenals, but we also have to work with the hypothalamus. We have to work with the whole axis. The whole system. The whole system. The whole system. Um, what else? Is there anything that the hypothalamus that we're missing that is it's sensitive to? We talked about nutrition. We talked about the toxins, especially pesticides. Are there any other toxins that, that came up? Heavy metals. Heavy metals. Um, you know, things like endocrine disruptors like BPA, very sensitive to it, and viruses, mm. bacterium. It's sensitive. I mean, we see a lot of hypothalamic dysfunction with people with um, Epstein-Barr virus infections, mm. like I said, COVID. Mm. So there's other infections that'll affect the hypothalamus as well. And it could be that a and lot brain of, trauma and brain trauma. Yeah, of like course. head injuries. I mean, some of my um, my most difficult patients are equestrians who had a lot of falls or gymnasts who had a lot of a lot of head injuries or football players or, and so that's what in my questionnaire like what happened to your head while you were growing up because it's gonna affect yeah. you you know you know this this brings back a memory you know i have this friend who um she was an, is was an equestrian or she just loved riding Horses. horses. Yeah. she grew up like that mm -hmm. and she hit her head and she she was a world-class supermodel and it out of, it, within three, four months, she gained 40 pounds of mm -hmm. water weight, mm -hmm. 40 to 60, but it's probably more mm -hmm. like 60 pounds. Cause I remember I saw her and, and, and now you think we're thinking hypothalamus. Yeah. Her va happened? vasopressin was off. So, vasopressin was off. Yeah. Right? Antidiuretic hormones. So hypothalamus controls how much water your kidneys release. Mm -hmm. And that's one way it controls your blood pressure through a hormone called antidiuretic hormone mm -hmm. or vasopressin. Mm -hmm. And when that part of the hypothalamus gets injured, by in her case a brain trauma yeah she fell off okay, the horse then it's going to affect it's going to affect the way your body holds on to fluids it's supposed to pull the fluids out of your tissues keep your tissues well hydrated so cell and intracellular fluids nice and well hydrated pull it out of the blood into the blood volume and then out through your kidneys but that can get really really messed up really messed up it's, mm -hmm. it's just getting better after three years yeah after three years, she well, missed much of her career. Well, because probably, they didn't focus on trying to heal that aspect of the hypothalamus. At all. No, at they all. didn't look they, at that they, at all. They would test everything but that, you know, and they would, they, they would test her hormones, but they didn't ever really give her a brain scan. They didn't test mm -mm. her antidiuretic hormone. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think they did, but 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 it, there was something that they were missing, especially in the brain. Yeah. But, but she started getting better when they started treating her with like post-concussion mm -hmm. sy symptoms. And, yeah. And just working on that. So uh, it's funny, you just, you, when you said the injury, it just lit up in me. Like, oh, yeah, that's what happened. Yeah. Um, so hypothalamus, we get it. It's, 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 it's the conductor, it's super sensitive. You mentioned those, even those endocrine disrupting chemicals that we don't want to talk mm -hmm. about all the time mm -hmm. the BPA, the phthalates, the stuff that we're drinking in the plastic Absolutely. or even being exposed to in our food, right? And, and, our, and the things we put on our skin, mm -hmm. the things we put in our body. All of those things are having an effect. Now, okay, well, now we're being inundated, right? Some people out there, they go, oh my God, I, I had Epstein-Barr virus. I don't have symptoms, but I kind of get brain fog. Right. I have all these hormonal yeah. issues. How do we begin to bring our hypothalamus to a more resilient, strong place? What are some of the things that we are totally missing out 
that can start bringing us back to a very resilient, good, powerful, robust type of wellness. Man, I am thrilled as always to tell you about BioOptimizer's Magnesium Breakthrough. It is the only full spectrum magnesium supplement that has all seven types of magnesium that your body needs. Now, if you're feeling run down or you're struggling with fatigue or you even have trouble unwinding or getting ready for bed, optimizing your magnesium levels makes a major difference. Magnesium Breakthrough can help you fall asleep faster, sleep more soundly through the night, wake up with more energy and mental clarity. This is all we want, right? We want to wake up and have feel that way through our day. Now you're going to notice better muscle function, better heart health, better brain performance. It reduces stress levels and anxiety while fueling your abundance of strength and stamina, right? All of our body uses magnesium. Right now you can get Magnesium Breakthrough at a discount using the code DRG10. And you get two free travel size bottles as a gift when you order. So how do you get it? Head to bioptimizers.com, B-I-O-P-T-I-M-I-Z-E-R-S.com slash DRG to learn more and take advantage of this limited time offer, regain your energy, peace of mind, and performance with Magnesium Breakthrough. Well, I, I preach five pillars to hypothalamic health and optimal functioning. And most of it you're doing with your, with your patients. And most of it people know about, but we're just not consistent enough. Okay. Number one is getting enough sleep in the dark for your age. Okay. For most adults that's seven to nine hours. And that means sleeping, following the sun. We know that the hypothalamus is definitely affected when you work grave shifts for a long period of time. So that circadian rhythm is, it's just off. It controls your circadian rhythm. So getting really deep sleep makes a huge difference to hypothalamic health. Your hypothalamus is super sensitive even to your behaviors. You initiating your sleep routine triggers the hypothalamus to go into nocturnal hormonal mode and starts triggering pineal production of melatonin, mm. It's which is the hypothalamus tells the pineal gland it's time. Mm. It is super sensitive to light. So for instance, when the sun is up, we've got blue rays coming in. When dusk occurs, that blocks those blue rays. As soon as that happens, if you get to see the sunset, your hypothalamus says, okay, it's nighttime. Yeah. But what if you miss a sunset? What if you're on a device, you're watching a screen, you're constantly getting those blue rays in, you're missing that window of the hypothalamus starting to settle down and going into nocturnal hormone mm. production. Mm. And so there's so much that we've done with too many lights on and screens and that we've actually affected our hypothalamus by not sleeping in the dark. Mm, and we're, we don't even think about it, right? It's part no, of just it's part the of, I mean, we've got lights everywhere. We've got digital lights everywhere. Right. We keep our devices next to us. Right. They flash. Mm. They, you know. So, so can you, it, okay, let's say someone hears this and they go, all right, I'm going to go see the sunset every night and I'm going to get blue blockers mm -hmm. and I'm going to turn the lights down dim. Mm -hmm. Will someone notice uh, an effect because their hypothalamus is getting better pretty fast or will it take years? No, it'll, it'll happen pretty fast. So usually your sleep cycles will reset within a few weeks. So if you start following a good sleep hygiene, get yourself, you know, not expose yourself to that blue light, mm -hmm. get yourself ready for bed, start going to bed at a time where you're able to sleep seven to nine hours uninterrupted, then your hypothalamus is going to respond better. You're going to respond better to stress. You're going to have more energy during the day, more yeah. alertness. So most of it's going to be more behavioral kind of feelings and things like that. But I've seen changes in even, you know, a regulation of menstrual cycles within a couple of months of just sleeping better. Uh, unbelievable. Just from sleeping better. Yeah, that's I, one. That's the that's one big one. intervention. I know that's, we're going to go into more. I know yeah, we, we got more. But we that got... that's a place to start. Of course. And, 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 and we undermine sometimes sleep. It's one of the first things to go, right? Like, Oh, I'm going to stay out another hour. I'll just sleep an hour less. Exactly. But that hour is golden for your hormones. Oh, it's huge. And we it's don't huge. think about it. Your hormones, your immune system, during sleep, after that melatonin production, your hypothalamus actually is releasing prolactin. And prolactin, we think, is prolactation hormone, but it's right. way more than that. We yeah. all make it, men and women at all ages. It actually controls your immune system. It triggers your thymus, which is a small endocrine gland right around your heart. It's right above your heart. It, um, it controls your immune system. And what it does is it acts like boot camp for your T cells. Mm. So prolactin is literally telling the thymus to start training those little soldiers. If it doesn't do that properly, you don't get enough prolactin exposure at night, then you're going to start attacking yourself instead of other. That's called wow. autoimmunity. Wow. I knew you were going there. I was going to ask you about <laughs> I know autoimmunity. You were. I, knew your eyes I was were so like excited that. to ask you about it. I'm like, I'm like <laughs> autoimmunity, autoimmunity. It's autoimmunity. Yep. Incredible. So, so, to be clear, when we don't sleep, 
we're not releasing enough prolactin. Yes. By not releasing enough prolactin, our thymus, where we educate immature immune cells, mm -hmm. is we, we, the boot camp isn't on. Mm -mm. Or, or it's a dif dysfunctional boot camp. Right. We got really poor in structures in, exactly. in this boot camp. Okay? You were given a rifle, but you weren't sh shown what to shoot. Exactly, yeah, exactly, exactly. You were like, well, what do we do with this? So so the sleep is, is, is affecting our immunity right there directly. Oh, it, absolutely. One of the things that I see, so oftentimes most doctors don't look at prolactin issues unless you have hyperprolactinemia way above normal and you have like a tumor in your pituitary gland. We think of prolactin as a pituitary hormone. The pituitary gland stores prolactin. It does not produce it. It's the hypothalamus that produces it. Mm -hmm. So we think of a microadenoma, hyperprolactinemia. You're producing too much prolactin. Yeah. We got to go and you know either surgically mm -hmm. remove that or hit you with a dopamine agonist. But a dopamine agonist is a drug. It's the hypothalamus that produces dopamine that turns prolactin off in the morning when the sun comes up. Mm -hmm. In patients who have struggle with their hormones and we can't quite get them right. So I'm, I'm supporting my patient's hypothalamus, but oftentimes they're coming to me and they need some downstream. They need, you know, they may need some cortisol. They may need some thyroid hormone. They may need sex hormones until their hypothalamus is optimized. Yeah. Okay. If their prolactin is discircadian, it's above what it should be during the day. Prolactin blocks all of your hormone receptors. Mm. So they're, it doesn't matter how much I give them, they're, it's just not working. Wow. So again, if I get the hypothalamus back into function and it's producing enough dopamine in the morning to turn off prolactin, then we're not struggling with our hormones and we're not showing signs of, of autoimmunity. So you'll see a, a dissercadian prolactin in autoimmune patients. It's going to be above what it should be first thing in the morning. Mm. It's going to be high. Mm. And they're fighting trying to actually regulate their immune system and as well as respond to their own hormones. So someone who has autoimmune disease, let's say Hashimoto's or, or Sjogren's or psoriasis, if they're with you, they're going to have higher prolactin than normal. I'm going to be looking at their prolactin as, at well, as, as well as well. I'm things. going to look at all of their antibodies or anti antibodies, but I'm also going to be looking at their hormones, including prolactin. Mm -hmm. So I like to check prolactin between eight and 9 AM mm -hmm. and preferably it's under nine. Okay, under nine. Under nine at that time. If it is higher than that, then we do we do things related to sleep hygiene to affect it. But I've seen patients that were they're not considered hyperprolactinemia. They maybe they're in their twenties. That's way too high for daytime functioning. Mm -hmm. That's a nighttime level, and they're like twenty at nine a.m., eight to nine a.m. That's way too high. It's way too high. And, but and it's not enough to trigger to do an MRI or to check for a tumor because we're not going to see a tumor that. That's just circadian prolactin production. So all you need to check your prolactin for sure. Ask your doctor to check that. Mm -hmm. uh, but you get the hypothalamus handbook and figure out what what's going on. In the in my in my book in the hypothalamus handbook, I talk about exactly what I oh, look at, perfect. all the blood work, and what we're and I actually have a section in there for healthcare providers to the way we like it, where it's short and easy. Sure. We get you know uh -huh. epidemiology, yeah. etiology, pathophysiology. So section four is for us to look at it plus. What, what are the normal levels for all that blood? Yeah. But in the beginning, I talk to the, the consumer, the patient, yeah. and say, listen, this is why I'm looking at DHEA. This is why I'm looking at uh, free T3. This is why I'm looking at prolactin. Yeah, I, I, 100%. So, 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 so to, to, to be clear on the prolactin then, it's supposed to be elevated at night. A absolutely. Okay. And you make eight hours of prolactin, no matter what, at a higher level. Mm -hmm. So if you don't go to bed early enough, you don't turn those lights off. You don't go to bed. You go to bed at 2 a.m. You're going to still make prolactin. It won't kick in till about 4, till about 11 to 12. Mm -hmm. So it's like you're sleepwalking. Mm. You need that caffeine to wake up. You can't, you can't get yourself up in the morning because mm -hmm. yeah. you're under the influence of prolactin. Exactly. It has a kind of an anesthetic effect. Ah, so if we're waking up with high prolactin and it's even elevating into the morning, mm -hmm. we're going to be groggy. Oh, yeah. And that's because of prolactin. Uh -huh. And we're not having enough cortisol boosting us up in the well, morning. Well, what turns prolactin off is dopamine. And dopamine actually is produced by the hypothalamus first thing in the morning in response to a nice low blood sugar to wake you up to say, and the hypothalamus says, I need some blood sugar. It produces dopamine, kicks on ACTH. You get some cortisol release uh -huh. so you can release that blood sugar and it can function. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't happen. So you, you drink a bunch of coffee instead uh, gotcha. and get your little artificial boost. So, so a lot of people... <laughs> 
who are needing coffee are not realizing my prolactin might be really high in the morning. I'm not activating enough cortisol in the morning. I'm sleeping poor. I need my coffee. Mm -hmm. That might be the cycle for years. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. we wonder why we have hormone dysfunction. Exactly. So the body's trying to do something at night that is so sophisticated and elegant and healing. And because what we do the night before we sleep is already kicking off the dysfunction. Exactly. And it's messing us up till the morning after. Exactly. Throughout the day. Unbelievable. This The man, the hypothalamus needs a nice warm hug from every <laughs> second. We all need to give love to our hypothalamus. So we got some more stuff though. We do. What, what are some other pillars? So the next pillar, sleep's number one. Number two is nutrition. So if I had to say what is the best diet for the hypothalamus, and you know, this sounds like I'm biased. I am. Mediterranean diet. Okay. I would say the Mediterranean diet is the easiest to follow, best diet for the hypothalamus, the least inflammatory, provides enough protein, provides healthy fats, lots of monounsaturated fats, is low in you know simple sugars, etc. But it's not so pristine that you don't get a little you know alcohol, you don't get a little caffeine, you don't get a little sugar. It's something that most people can live with and they can do easily. And it has been shown to have the least amount of inflammation mm -hmm. and best in terms of cancer and heart disease. And so it's the easiest diet to follow. Mm. So that's the one I prescribe for my patients as their baseline if they're not already there. The majority of my patients, though, by the time they come and see me, they're not on SAD. They're not on standard American diet. They've done some stuff. Oh, yeah. I'm like their seventh to ninth provider before, they, you know, they've gone through it. Yeah. And so they're, so we're really refining their diet at this point. But that's the diet. I, I would prescribe. It needs to be plant-based. And when I'm talking Mediterranean, I'm not talking pizza and pasta. Right. I'm talking plant-based. If you, if you see what we eat in our family, and I was raised this way. I'm Italian. My husband's Greek. We eat so much produce. It's, it, most people don't even think about this much produce. Mm -hmm. You know, the majority of their plate is covered with a starch and a, mm -hmm. and a protein. And ours is like three, four, five different, you know, vegetables and just a ton of produce. I just, I, I can't imagine why people don't even enjoy vegetables. And I always, I'm do, I do a lot of cooking lessons with my patients. Like you don't know how to cook. Oh, Let beautiful. me teach you some things. Yes, yes, yes. I love that. You have that plant-based glow. Because yeah. there's a lot of antioxidants in your body. I could tell your hypothalamus is just dancing. It knows, it knows what it's doing. It's just eating from the earth. Eating, eating from, from the earth. earth. So that, so Mediterranean as a, for, as a guideline as a baseline for, the baseline, diet for the hypothalamus, eating from the earth, mm -hmm. always making sure not pizza ain't necessarily from the earth, especially if it's just well, like, not, that's not the majority. I mean, majority. we have a pizza oven. We make homemade pizza, but homemade pizza, right? Oh yeah. Homemade, lots of veggies on it. But do we do it all the time? No. So you know? what, what's a, what's a good example of a hypothalamus dish, feeding dish, like a good one? Like, what does it look like? What, which meal are you talking about? Yeah, Let's do dinner. Okay. So typically for dinner, what I would love to, I love roasting vegetables. It's like the easiest way to deal with your veggies. Plus we know that olive oil is the oil that preserves the nutrients of any other roasting oils. Mm. Okay. So roasting means under 500 degrees, olive oil gets denatured at over 500 degrees. So we're talking 350, 300 to 400. And so roasting all kinds of vegetables, root vegetables, I'm talking, you know, fennel, beets, leeks, onions, mm. Um, I'll do starchies. I'll do, you know, butternut squash or kabucha, maybe some yam, even potatoes. That's fine. Keep the skins on, you know, buy organic, you know, broccoli, asparagus, you name it. Put them all roasted. in there. Put them all in there and roast. And, um, and then I usually serve some kind of protein. So, and there's also leafy greens. So, you know, it could be a raw salad or I loved cook, cook greens. I mean, you oh, actually get a okay. lot more minerals when you act, you saute those those greens in olive oil and then squeeze a little citric acid like lemon juice on yeah. it because it really allows you to absorb the iron and the minerals in the in the cooked greens. Yeah. And then, you know, we do I usually do a marinated vegetable with it because it's easier to digest. That's your digestive, so like olives or something pickled. Mm. Okay. Something with a little yeah, kick to so, it. Yeah, so yeah, so the salad will have a little marinated vegetable oh, in nice, there. Nice. And if you have it leftover roasted vegetables, you can throw those on tomorrow's lunch salad, right? Okay, okay. And then some kind of protein, fish, poultry. It's not that we don't red, do red meat. We love lamb. Right. My husband's going to be making some He's beautiful great. organic lamb chops tonight, you yeah, know. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we'll make a homemade, you know, pesto with it with fresh basil and I mean, it's just, it's all about the herbs. It's all about the veggies. Now, is there a starch? Not if I have, you know, potatoes and, you know, butternut in there. Will I make starches? Some, I will. 
Sometimes. It kind of matters. Dinner is not my time that I like to have starches. I'm, I'll be 63 next month. And I don't need those extra calories at night. Mm -hmm. I want to, you know, stay slim. Mm -hmm. So I'll have it. I'll have it during the day. Okay. I'll have my whole grain, you know, oats or whole grain sourdough bread in the mm -hmm. morning with avocado on it. I may have some quinoa at, at lunch, but I'm not going to do the starches at night. If I'm going to choose my carbohydrate, I'd rather have a glass of red wine. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. So you know what works for you. Exactly. That's a very Mediterranean household. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm over here seeing, I'm, for, for some reason, it, the, I see outdoors, like a Tuscany vibe. Oh, we you do. We, have, we grow lights. grapes. We, grow, we oh, have our see, own olives. I already had the we vision. Have, I, you have to come I, by. Listen, you're in Ohio. You I'm right up by. the road. Yeah. Like, <laughs> hey, listen, I need a good meal. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not necessarily the one who you. can cook. We could feed you. But, but I try. <laughs> okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. So now I got, I got the vision. We, you know, we're all getting the understanding. Okay. We can... You know, how long does it take to roast vegetables? You could do that really quick. It's super easy. I'll right? prep them, you know, earlier in the day and just stick them in the oven and turn the oven on. And turn you it know, on. later. Yeah. And then you just do whatever exactly. and you come out and check on it. Exactly. Uh, to make a salad. Easy. Easy. Right? And the only thing, you know, you, you can even roast the salmon, for example. If you exactly. You could like do that. that. You could take, okay. So, so, so eating for our health. W w are we missing any pillars here? Yes. Yes. So one, another pillar is activity. Being sedentary is the new smoking. Okay. Okay. We, most of us sit in our butts too long. Okay. And do you need to, to exercise? Do you need to go out and run? Do you need, if you have an active lifestyle, you are a worker, like a construction worker. You're working on a farm. Probably not. But the majority are not, of us are not doing that anymore. Mm. So we're, we need to have some kind of activity and exercise. And it's every day. And we need to get off of our bottoms. We need to start moving around. Mm -hmm. We need to start walking. We need to start bicycling. We need to start swimming. We need to find dance classes. It doesn't really matter how you move your body. You need to move. Mm -hmm. When you don't move, your hypothalamus reads that you are metabolically inactive and slows your metabolism down to match your metabolic inactivity. Mm -hmm. So you have to move every day. Every day. Every day. And you could do that simply by just getting a walk in or something. Yeah, after walk, a meal or on turn a call, on some music, dance, dance a little bit, stand up to do some of your computer work, okay. you know, so, do some stretching. So people who are eight hours though, eight, nine to five, wh wh is it like a, every 10 minutes, every hour? We, we just find the newest find research shows that actually getting up and every 30 minutes for five minutes at a time is best. If you can't do that, then it's 10 minutes every hour where you get up and walk around, move around, et cetera, mm. actually, actually helps to stimulate your metabolism. And, and this, is, this is true to life because you don't know that Deborah and had a nice walk before we did this podcast around the neighborhood. <laughs> so you are moving and moving and you're, you're, you're doing your thing. After the drive from Ojai down here, I know your body. Oh, yeah. Up. Like I got to move you around. To yeah. move. Okay. So how many is that? Three or That's four? That's three. That's okay, three. We got another one. So number four is a healing mindset. So you said, does the hypothalamus affect more than just the physicality? Mm -hmm. It absolutely does. I believe, and I've seen research in this, that it's, it's the gateway to the subconscious mind. So one of the things that I notice is when we're supporting the hypothalamus nutraceutically, that people who don't dream start to dream and remember their dreams. Mm -hmm. They remember them and can even become a lucid dreamer. There's something very strong about the fact that when you have your consciousness is, is very aware, you're very aware, you, you're as you said, channeling, you're bringing information in. When your consciousness is very aware, it's the hypothalamus is functioning at a higher level, mm. okay? It can't function at that super high level if you're physically not well, if you're, not, if you're sick, if you're not well nourished, if you're inactive. So all of those other pillars are part of that aspect. Now, I don't have enough great bioidentical hormones. I don't have enough nutraceuticals. I don't have enough you can't get enough sleep or eat a healthy enough diet and move enough if you have a mindset that doesn't believe you're going to heal, mm. if you're getting in the way. Now, I have seen people shift their mindset just by doing all the other four pillars. Okay. okay? And so I'll tell you number five. Okay. Oh, yeah. I've seen them shift their mindset. But there's a lot to be said about how you self-talk. Yeah. And... I had a horse experience. I am an equestrian. Okay. And I had an experience back in 2002, shortly after we moved to our, to our place in Ojai, where my, I had a vision of my horse slipping and falling 
and that I got trapped under her and we were on a ride. And so I immediately said, I got to get rid of that thought. And I got rid of it. And not five minutes later on a, a slick street, she slipped. Well, I vaulted myself off, so I did not get trapped under her, but I hit my face on the on the street and knocked my teeth out. I looked like somebody had beat me up asphalt. It was a mess. I go to the dentist with my teeth, catch my horse, you know, go to the ER, get x-rays, tell the dentist to put my teeth back in. He's like, these don't, won't stick. I'm like, Shh, you can't say that. Uh, you need to believe this. I believe it. Uh -huh. So 24 hours later, my teeth are in. I'm super swollen. I got asphalt all over my face. I'm feeling sorry for myself. We're building our pool in the backyard. We just moved there. The horse is all bruised. She's hanging over me. And I hear this voice. And it says, it's time for you to practice what you preach. So I became my best cheerleader. This happened on a Friday morning. I started cheerleading myself, everything I put into my mouth, which was mostly liquids at that point, and cleaning the asphalt off of my face. By Monday, I went back to the ER to pick up my x-rays. They didn't even recognize me. I was completely healed. Wow. I had these same teeth. They never fell out. By Monday? By Monday, everything was healed. You were cheering Three days yourself. later. I, ever, I just told my body what a great job it was doing at healing. Every single time. I didn't look for the negative. I looked for the positive. So what does cheering for yourself look like? I looked in there and said, wow, look at how your, you know, the skin is healing. Uh, and, you know, the swelling is going down. Yeah. And, and you, know, you know, drinking like my a protein drink, you know, because I could only sip yeah. things. This, these amino acids are these going to drinks, healing yeah. mm -hmm. my body. You know, I was telling it everything it was going to do. I was telling it what a great job it was doing. Mm -hmm. And it healed quickly. This, that, uh, I, I, I'm, you, I'm, I'm not here to be like, oh, I don't know if that, I know that's true. I, you know, it is the most unbelievable thing because it's sort of, I know your body's conscious. Everyone's body is conscious, yes. aware. It's listening. Mm -hmm. It's responding. I've had moments with my body. I was like, oh my God, that's like a completely conscious life being, right? So, you know, I, I, in the shower, I'll, I'll talk to my body mm -hmm. every morning while I'm dancing and thank mm -hmm. it for healing and thank it for balancing and detoxifying and, and regulating all of the things, man, I got to have a relationship with my body. And, and it's beautiful that you, you are preaching this. Mm -hmm. And I would actually challenge all the viewers and listeners. Do you have a relationship with your body? Do you talk to your body? And if you do, how do you talk to your body? Because I guarantee more likely than not, it's, oh, why don't you just do this? I wish I could just go. Why do I always, instead of being like, oh, thank you. Yeah. You know? And that one shift healed you so fast. Oh, I totally believe it. And I mean, I've just seen it so much in my patients. I, I had a young woman, very young woman. She was the niece of a patient of mine who I diagnosed with breast cancer. And I diagnosed this woman with metastatic breast cancer at the age of 32. She already had METs on her vulva. She came in thinking something was wrong there. Mm. So this was years ago. She brought her niece to me who was related by marriage. It wasn't a blood niece because the girl was concerned about her breasts that she would get a cancer like her aunt. And I saw this girl frequently and said, you've got to quit worrying about this. Sure enough, did she not develop within 18 months of her aunt's death a tumor in exactly the same spot as her aunt? Mm. Mm. She worried herself. It was a fibroadenoma. It was benign. But it was the same size, same spot. Is the body talking? Yes, the negative talk, that mm -hmm. worry, that focus instead of on the positive. It's, so. it's expressing. Exactly. You're, it's just, you're just telling before. it what to do. You're negative reinforcement to do. versus positive reinforcement. Yeah. Okay, so you, that's that's the fourth pillar. Talking that's to yourself fourth pillar. positively. And number Believing five. Believing you can heal. Believing you can heal. Right? Believing, Believing you can heal. Because, because you can't just talk to yourself, hey, I'm doing well. And in the back of your mind, be like, oh, but am I doing well? Or exactly. will I be able to heal? Exactly. It's a full... Like, hell yes. Yeah. Well, and that's why you need to partner with your healthcare providers. Are they on the same page as you? Right. You know, are they negative nillies or are they positive? <laughs> I know. Uh, no, a lot of you out there have a lot of negative nillies out there. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't do this. This was never done in medicine. Or just, you know, this. they're afraid of malpractice. So they tell you all the bad, the worst things that are happening rather than to focusing themselves. on the best. Yeah. Okay. There's a drum roll. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Number five. Number five is nutraceutical support. Oh, okay. So we, now we're talking supplements. Yes, we are. Okay. Yes, what are, are some of the best ones? And, we, and and you'll tell us about your gold one too. But but let, let's go into the nutraceutical. Man, I am excited to tell you about Anima Moody, one of my favorite herbal companies across the board for many years. You've seen it on my stories. I'm excited to introduce you to Anima Moody. It is a top selling organic Peruvian maca powder. Ooh, it is a superfood with over 2,000 years of medicinal use. I have it every day. I just use it this morning. That's why I'm all buzzing. 
Island. It's sourced from the high Andes Mountains. This maca powder offers incredible adaptogenic properties, meaning it's helping balance your stress levels, increasing energy, libido, stamina, and balancing your hormones. You see, the indigenous people of Peru rely on this nutrient-dense maca powder to thrive in those harsh conditions. Now, new research confirms its modern vitality benefits. It can elevate your sexual health for both men and women while reducing unpleasant menopause symptoms, right? The superfood powder's potential is remarkable. I put it in every single one of my morning coffees and drinks. Anima Mundi's ethically wild craft premium grade maca, they do it in small batches and house the ancient wisdom with healing science. To get 15% off of all Anima Mundi products, go to their beautiful website. You're gonna love it. It's animamundiherbals.com. A-N-I-M-A-M-U-N-D-I-H-E-R bals.com and the code at checkout is drg 15 percent off you won't love it get your herbs there so um so when i developed my genesis gold we didn't have much research in supplements for the hypothalamus since though there's quite a bit and so we now know that the hypothalamus is very sensitive to amino acids particularly branch chain amino acids it's incredibly sensitive to polyunsaturated fatty acids pufas mm -hmm. and especially the omega-3s and those derived from the ocean Okay. And then plant phenols. It's very, very sensitive to botanicals, plant phenols, etc. So there's actually some good research on individuals, but it usually targets a single pathway for the hypothalamus, like the HPA pathway yeah. or the hypothalamic pituitary thyroid pathway, mm -hmm. etc. So 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 it's a matter of mixing up all the ones you've seen in research into a formula? Yeah. Well, yeah, kind of, yeah. kind of. Yeah. So That's kind of what I did. <laughs> so, so we got the omegas. Now, you said you said ones from the ocean, not ones from fish, you're saying? Or no, fish count fish. too? Yeah, fish, not yeah. the algae ones? Yeah, algae Algae too. counts yeah, too. Yeah, algae counts too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have the yeah. omegas, the, mm -hmm. the, the all the plant polyphenols, mm -hmm. and what was the other one that you said? And amino acids. And the amino acids. And amino acids. Is, is there, is it the branch chain amino acids? Branch just, chains just are that? the ones that have been studied, but there's a, a, quite a few of both essential and conditionally essential amino acids that are super important for hypoflexion. Is it good to yeah. supplement then with amino acid powders for your hypothalamus it or is be. it just it eating? It, well, eating enough proteins, but sometimes you need to, to supplement. That's, mm. it's a, that's actually at the core of my formula is a, a hypothalamic amino acid blend. I love that. Yeah. And all of these together uh -huh. are feeding your hypothalamus. Your hypothalamus. And your hypothalamus goes, oh my God, thank you. Now I'm getting it. The, re the reason I think it's important is because it's, even though we eat so well, I mean, I live in Ojai, I can get organic, everything's fresh. We, yeah. It's like little, it's like Southern Italy. So we grow yeah. everything, the Mediterranean grows. It's still not quite all the nutrition that I may genetically need or that my husband may genetically need or that you genetically yeah. need. Because, you know, honestly, none of us are really living where our, our genetic roots are. Right. And yeah. that's what our DNA grew up with. That's what we are used to. And here, especially in the United States, where most of us are kind of mutts, you know, we've got mixed genes. Right. right? So we need a little more variety. So my goal was try to, you know, could I harvest from all around the earth, you know, every continent, every sea and see if we can get enough mixed foods, whole foods into a powder form and feed the hypothalamus what it needs and then mm. kind of give it the potpourri. Here's mm. your choices here. What can you use? Mm, that makes sense. That makes sense. That's the Genesis Gold one you have. Right? Yeah, That's yeah. That's beautiful. Uh, okay, so let's summarize the five. Okay, so it's sleep, nutrition, activity, mindset, and nutraceutical support with Genesis Gold. And, and, and listen, that's all you need, because if you if if so if you're suffering with we have, you have to understand this, hormonal issues are downstream manifestations of the most upstream fountainhead, which is the hypothalamus. Absolutely. Well said. And and those five things that you said, if they're off, hypothalamus, the conductor of your whole body is suffering. It's not going to function optimally. It's not going to function it optimally. It may even be de dysfunctional and it may suffer from microinflammation, which is a disaster. And no <laughs> symptoms can look like brain fog, swelling, low metabolism, uh, low libido, your sex hormones are not balanced. Uh, what, what am I missing? Poor, Poor stress, stress, response. stress response. You can't regulate your temperature. You can't Ugh. regulate your body weight, your um, infertility. Mm. You, you know, your metabolism is off. You're mm. not digesting properly. You're not detoxifying properly. You're catching colds. You're getting cancer. You can't protect it. You have autoimmunity, depression, anxiety, All chronic insomnia. I mean, you name it. There's, there's very few things that aren't, that aren't somehow the hypothalamus isn't hooked in. 
Mm-hmm. You know, even you cough on me and you give me strep and I catch it. Yeah. The fact I catch it means my immune system wasn't strong enough to fight it off. Right. Right. And I, right? I think about that often is like, okay. So yes, it's streptococcus and yeah, we can have yeah. an antibiotic or an herb or something, but still I should have been able to fight this. What off. is it saying about your own immunity, exactly. about the own uh, terrain, the strength exactly. of your... Exactly. And that's one of the things that we see is when you start nutraceutically supporting your hypothalamus, is your immune system stronger? I mean, some of my teacher patients are like... Ugh. I'm finally not getting sick from these little petri dish kids because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> they're constantly coughing and sneezing on their little booger monsters. <laughs> the, listen, d- grades one through five teachers can be the oh healthiest or the sickest people oh around. Oh my goodness. It it's depends. Incredible. Their immune system. It's incredible. And you do need to give it time. The hypothalamus will not heal overnight. It takes a minimum of 90 days okay. to fix the All hypothalamic right. pituitary whatever access. Okay, so you need at least three months of support to really see the difference. Not that you're not going to start feeling more energetic, sleeping better, but really to see that difference, at least three months of support. Um, okay, we got it. 90 days. All of you, 90 days. Don't even go any any less than that. This is not a quick fix. It's not a quick fix. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't develop hypothalamic dysfunction overnight, except for your friend who hit her head. Hard, <laughs> yes, right? exactly. Except for yeah. those brain injuries. It's usually not that quick. Mm-hmm. It's usually, and even with a brain injury, it's usually a kind of a slow development. It took her a few months to start really seeing all that weight gain. It all kind of piled up yeah. because your brain tries to protect itself, mm-hmm. but oftentimes it can't. Beautiful. Okay, look, the hypothalamus handbook. What else do we have? How do we find you? Like, you know, I know a lot of people are like, I really liked her. I need to find her. <laughs> Where are you at? So my, uh, my website is genesisgold.com. If you also type in the hormone queen, you'll find me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> I got I, I got that moniker years ago, and mm-hmm. so that you'll find me there. But genesisgold.com, and I have lots of information. I have a YouTube channel. I have a huge blog with tons of inf- hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of articles. Oh yeah, on almost any topic you can think of, just put it in the search engine on the Perfect. website, and you'll find something related to what you're suffering from because the hypothalamus controls so many things. If you're suffering with a hormone issue, I want you to open up that website right now, go to the search bar, type in whatever you're suffering with, go read. This is time to educate yourself and do something about this. Get this book, try out the supplement and really give yourself 90 days, like you said, 90 days and see how our hormones start to benefit. I mean, this resonates so much. I love the part about prolactin because we never really talked about it on the we show. Don't. And it's such an important piece. <laughs> and nobody piece. measures it. <laughs> nobody measures it. And we have to think about our immune system with all yeah. of it. It's such a, it's so fascinating and refreshing even for me. You know, I'm sitting here, I'm like, oh, wow, I, I love this part. Um, thank you for coming all the way from Ojai, all the <laughs> way welcome. down to Venice to have this conversation. I, like I said, I even love the feel of your book. I can't wait to read this myself. And, um, and as always, just... Your, your your ability to put yourself out there is beautiful. Your research is beautiful. Your passion is beautiful. And uh, that's the type of people I love bringing on the show. And um, thank you so much for this conversation. Thank you for having me. Thank you.